Autumn, thank you though for connecting. Thank you for yeah, thank you for um, having me. Being willing to allow, allow us to spotlight you and your business. And so to get started, our first question really is tell us a bit about you and your business and um maybe how long you've been in business. Yeah, you bet. So um it actually started the bakery piece of our business first. That was 13 years ago, which feels crazy looking backward, but at the time I was my only employee and we had a, a small bakery that was, we were subleasing from what was then Aromas Coffee House in the downtown area of Omaha. And so started as a one woman operation out of that kitchen and about a year and a half into that process had the opportunity to take over the lease for the coffee shop as well. And so uh, it felt like we were always associated with the other brand, but we didn't have any control over the customer experience or the quality of the product until that point. And so we really were excited about the opportunity to, to try something new. And we had always heard that baked goods and coffee went well together. So we thought that it wasn't too much of a stretch to give it a shot. And so uh, that's how we started in 2010. And uh, since that time, we opened uh, our second location in the Benson neighborhood. That's where I'm actually talking to you from today. Uh, opened our third location in North Omaha. So that's on 30th Street between Hamilton and Lake. And then in 2021, we opened our first drive through location. Uh, and that's when my husband came on board and was able to join the leadership uh, during that time. So we have four brick and mortar locations. We, we roast our coffee in house. We have since 2015 and we still have that bakery going strong. Beautiful. So tell me again, the names of both of the businesses. Yeah, so it, it's one of those funny things where we started out with multiple brands. We had Bliss Old Market Bakery. We had Aromas Coffee House. We started roasting under Hardy Coffee Company. And then one day you look up and you realize that you're just confusing your customers. <laughs> and so it all made sense from the inside, but we decided to really clarify our messaging to, to clarify our brand. And in 2017, we brought every piece of the business, every location, every part of the company under the name Hardy Coffee Company. And so that's my maiden name. So the name meant a lot to me, uh, but it's also a real word. And so we, we love the idea that uh, the people in the Midwest are hardy, that we're resilient, that we can do hard things. And uh, it feels like that just coming out of winter. So it's nice to, to offer a good hardy product for, for our customers. Beautiful, I love that. And so when you say we, who else are, are your business partners? Uh, you know, it's one of those funny things where we just have an incredible team of people. And so we have over 70 employees on our team now. And so uh, it feels crazy when I started as my only employee to look up and realize that we've got a whole whole army of good, good employees that we get to walk through this with. So um, my husband was always part of the business, but again, he came on as an actual employee and leadership in 2020, helped us open that last location and then came on full time in April of last year. So uh, we get to do this thing together. We have fantastic shop managers and department heads and then, uh, yeah, everywhere from every location and all the way down. Beautiful, beautiful. You referenced it, but I'm curious to hear it from you. What do you think you would attribute your growth to? You referenced your your team, right? The people. What else would you mm -hmm. uh, include in your growth <laughs> strategies that have worked for you? You know, I... We are not a tech company. We're not the kind of business that has overnight success. We don't have exponential growth when it comes to, to that sort of profit. I think for us, so much of the success has just been waking up every day and doing the next best thing. And so we it's about consistency for us. It's about um, continuing to focus on quality, uh, uh, to, to continue to focus on customer service, to do those hard things that are simple, but, but really add up over time. And so, um, yeah, we, we, we talk a lot about consistency around here. Beautiful. And that is important, right? Absolutely. It's one of the delivery um, elements of a good product or service is consistency. People need to know what to expect. Absolutely. They will. And I think that people will, they'll choose a worse product if it's consistent. Like they may have one great experience with you, but if it's bad the next time or it's just different every time they come, at some point they're going to choose what they know instead of choosing what's a better product. So, so we know that every time somebody comes to one of our shops that we need to be following the recipes that they need to know what to expect and that it'll, a vanilla latte tastes the same here as it does at any of our other shops. Absolutely. Clearly for you, the marketing is the experience. Um, so if, if we go with that concept, what would you add? What's the experience like that you're creating there for at, at all of your um, establishments? 
That's a good question. I think for us, um, like specialty coffee isn't so much about indulgence. You know, I, I don't love the idea of it being something you deserve or that you're treating yourself or it's this, this indulgence that you are trying to to work up to. For us, it has so much more to do with ritual about, about creating these moments and places and things in your life that add, that add value and rhythm to every day. And so we love being a neighborhood shop where we see the same customers five times a week because we're just part of their routine. We get to, we get to be part of their, their family. You know, we, we see people grow up and, and we get to grow up right alongside them. Love that. Love that. Mm -hmm. If you were to do some things over, so let's talk about the learnings. If you were start to start from square <laughs> one, what might sure, be, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah. Right. So what, what, what might those things be as you think about what you've learned and maybe sharing with others who are listening to this um, spotlight? Um, I think to, to stop doing things that aren't working sooner. You know, I think that sometimes you get so passionate about something as the business owner or it's your idea. And so you just keep trying to make it work. And I think that sometimes it's just better to kill those darlings a little bit sooner and to figure <laughs> out how to, to move on to the next thing and not, not sink all of your energy into something that, that isn't ever gonna quite pan out. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. And I think to always, um, listen to your customers. You know, I think that same thing I have realized along the way that I am not my target audience, that there's things that I would just do myself and not necessarily buy, or there's ways that um, different things appeal to me as a customer than necessarily appeal to our customers. And so I can't just go off of my gut reaction every time. Like you have to actually ask, you have to actually survey, you have to actually look at the numbers instead of just say like, I really think that'll sell, or I really don't think that will sell because we're just uh, I'm one person. And so it's really important to get a better, a better look at our entire customer base. Absolutely. And of course, testing and measuring and experimenting mm -hmm. and see what does work, as you said. Um, Absolutely. I'm, curious, I'm curious as um, a business owner, uh, as uh, a woman in, in owning your own business, or at least in partnership, uh, and the busy lives that we we keep. I'm curious about how you integrate your personal your personal life, your personal goals with that of your business. You know, I think that um, so I my husband and I have been married for eight years before we had kids. And so I have two two kids now, uh, seven and four years old, and I love them so much. And I think that enjoying being a mom is one of the best surprises of my life. Like it's just been this thing that I was a little bit nervous about because I'd already created uh, this life and these goals and these ambitions uh, before that. And you just hope that all of yourself doesn't change in the process. Um, and I think for me, it's just been such a gift to be able to integrate those parts of my life together, to have my kids in the shop, to teach them about what we're doing behind the scenes and to let them come to work on a on a crazy day to, to help wash the dishes and do the things that they can at the ages they are. But I think maybe the most important thing that they brought to my life is just better balance. Uh, I My greatest hobby is working and my best pastime is more work. And I think before I had kids, I was perfectly content just living at the shop and running hard every day. And all of a sudden there are these tiny humans that I really wanted to see before and after those things happened. And so uh, I think that they brought better balance to my life in a way that nothing else could have. And so it was important to be home before they went to childcare and it was important to be home for dinner. And I started having harder stops and better boundaries and uh, unplugging my phone and making sure that uh, I had uh, a better system in place to make sure that our team was taking care of things and it wasn't just me because they're so capable. My team is capable and willing and eager. And so it just took that push to say like, oh yeah, delegation is a healthy thing to, to put into practice. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love hearing that. Um, I, I think business is as simple as people and process. Um, mm -hmm. and yes, but sometimes that's the difficulty of it, right? To, mm -hmm. For the alignment of that. So finding good people uh, that want to do good things and making sure you've got good processes to support them mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, and such clear expectation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Clarity and expectations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what do you look for as your building team? What would be the qualities that you say? Absolutely. These kinds of people or persons belong on our team. 
Yeah, it's not original to me. Uh, we we read Pat Lencioni's book, The Ideal Team Player, several years ago, and so many of the qualities that he talks about in there really resonated with us. And so when we're looking for team members, we're looking for people that are hungry, humble, and smart. And so what that means here, when someone's hungry, that means that they're ambitious. They they come in and they get started. You don't need to encourage them to do their job every day. They're, they know what to do and are driven. Um, humble, it doesn't mean that they're thinking less of themselves. It just means that they know their role on the team, how to be the most helpful in that position and that situation. Um, and smart is people smart. So it's not necessarily knowing all the answers, but it's being able to read your team members. It's being able to read the customer. It's being able to anticipate questions and to be able to uh, to help just smooth over any conversation that that maybe has some hard edges. So those are things that we talk about a lot from the hiring process, through training, through every annual review, like we keep coming back to those things. And, and when you find somebody that resonates with that, man, we can just tell that, that we're a good fit for them and they're a good fit for us. Nice, nice. What, what's your intention about the work environment that you're trying to create there or the culture that you're creating for them once you bring them on team? Yeah, I, so I mentioned before that we have over 70 employees on our team now, but a lot of those people are part-time. You know, it's a lot of people that are working their way through school or it's uh, just a part-time job while they're doing something else or, or they're a mom or dad that is doing this on the weekends. And so for us, like we want to make sure that this is the kind of job that you don't necessarily have to wake up thinking about every day if you're not here. But when you are here, you're able to walk in the door and the job in front of you is clear that you can step into it, that you can do the work at hand without it feeling like it's an undue burden. And so we want it to be a job that's enjoyable, that is has those clear expectations and you can just feel successful at uh, once you make it through training. And I think the other piece of it is, you know, we talk so much about that rhythm and ritual and connection for our customers, but but we really want that for our staff too, to say like, this is a shop where I feel supported, where I feel seen by my manager, where I feel um, like whether or not I see the owners every single day, I know that they're always available and that like it has the feeling of that small business that so many people are looking for, even as we continue to grow. Nice, nice. Might there be something about business that maybe was a misconception or something that you found that you needed to further clarify uh, with employees as as things have it shifted and changed in the world in which we live today? Yeah, you know, I think that like the speed of the leader is the speed of the team. And so anytime that we find these hiccups along the way, I, I can be frustrated or I can just say like, oh man, like I missed something along the way. Like I didn't lead well here or I didn't clarify well there. Um, and I really think for me, some of it was, um, so we had one location that didn't make it. It was in 2016, it opened a month before I had my first kid. It was in a beautiful space and everything on paper said that it was gonna work and it just didn't. For two years we tried and we we failed to be able to make it cash flow. And we just realized at some point that the energy we were putting towards that location was detracting from everything else that we were doing. But up until that point, I did a really bad job of sharing numbers and data with my team. I always just felt like it was above their pay grade. Like I should be able to manage that piece of things and they should show up and just be able to make our customers happy. And it was through that process that I really realized like, oh no, like they can help. Like they have ideas that are right. going to contribute to this. There are pieces of the puzzle that, that I don't know. And if I'm not sharing the hard data, if we're not talking about revenue and cost of goods, if we're not talking about payroll, if we're not talking about all of those things that just feel like really big numbers, if you're not giving good, good interpretation to them uh, are really helpful tools and in, in, in getting support from your team. And so I think through that process of a failed location, I learned how to better um, how to better present that information, how to be more open-handed, how to make sure that there was better transparency with the people on our team that, that we sincerely trust. We just hadn't hadn't done a good job of bringing them into those conversations yet. What a great story. You know, I we like to talk about the only failure is if one chooses not to participate. Everything else we should learn from. And it doesn't always feel like it in the moment, but I, I love know that. It. <laughs> and that is so true, isn't it, friend? I mean, it truly mm -hmm. is that's a part of our humanness to say, 
we got to be okay with that. Let that show up because that's how, how we connect as well. Um, and I can tell that you're really grounded in that spirit. That's awesome. Um, I'm curious about what might you say to your younger self? So you said, okay, you were married so many years before you had children and, and you had these aspirations. And um, today, I um, mean, you get to define what younger self is, right? What, what advice would you give your younger self? Uh, I think I would tell her that it's going to be harder than you think, and it's going to take longer than you feel like it should. And that's okay. You know, I think that I'm one of those strange people that this is literally what I've wanted to do with my life since high school. Like I went to school for business. I had the idea of a coffee shop and bakery, you know, something in hospitality. This is, this is the way that I wanted to contribute to my community. It's the way that I just saw like the authentic way that people connect around good food. And I wanted to be a part of that. Um, but it just, it's still hard, even though it's simple, it's hard and it takes time and there's a steep learning curve. And I think uh, I would tell my younger self like, hey, this is, this is still gonna be worth it, but it's gonna take longer than you think it's going to for it to feel that way. And so uh, to not get too caught up in uh, the daily failures and to keep my eye on the long-term thread of that. Nice. There are short-term and longer-term focuses and priorities, no mm -hmm. doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what's in front of you right now that you're trying to solve or that you're embracing as maybe an opportunity or something in the environment that has shifted um, where you might be? What, what would you say? Yeah. To that? Uh, so our main focus for the rest of this year, we, we need to, we need to move our roasting facility. And so we started roasting in 2015 in this tiny shoebox of a room in North downtown. Uh, in 2018, we opened our North Omaha location and we moved the bakery piece of the business and the roasting facility there. And uh, we keep growing our wholesale business. And so initially we were just roasting for ourselves, but we have over 40 wholesale accounts now. So other coffee shops and restaurants and organizations that are serving really great coffee and we get to come alongside them to do so with calm confidence. Um, and so we're really focused on, on expanding that piece of the business. And this next year, we're ready for the next size roaster, but our physical space won't fit it. And so it starts that domino effect of saying like, okay, like now we're, now we're on to the next thing. But I, so that's a big piece of it for us. And so it's trying to figure out how to be a good wholesale partner, not just a good business owner. And so that's a different skill set, but similar. And so working with, um, yeah, so I hired promoted a uh, salesperson and trying to lead him to do that really well, where I was that person for a long time. It's um, coming alongside wholesale accounts to create a consultation program. So it's not just here's the product, but also here's the toolbox to, to help you do this really well. So it's not a franchise, but how do we provide some of those same tools a franchise would have so that these customers uh, are successful faster than we were and that we can be successful together for a long time. Beautiful, beautiful. Are you thinking that the the destination or one of the the longer term goals for you might be um, continuing the next generation of ownership, um, or or is that something that um, your your kids are even exploring right now, or interested, or is it too early to tell? Well, I asked my seven year old the other day what he wanted to do when he grew up, and he said he wants to be a professional basketball player and work at Hardy in the off season. So I really think we're we're on <laughs> some sort of track. You're on to something. I love it. Uh, yeah. Thankfully at this point, um, we're, you know, even the five-year plan doesn't touch that. And so I think we, I never want to force this dream on my kids, you know, like I don't think that I want them to be able to do what they're passionate about. And if it isn't this, then hopefully we've built a strong enough business that somebody else would want it. And so we get to take it a, a day and a year and a decade at a time. Beautiful. Love it. Love it. If you were to say you have a mission uh, and or a vision for your business, what, how would you explain that? You know, it, it shifted just a little bit during, during COVID. You know, I think it's one of those things where before then we were so focused on um, like the physical space of it to say, you know, we create these spaces that people want to spend time in and it's this ex escape from their day to day. And then, uh, then you can't have people in your cafe for eight weeks and things change a little bit. And so we, we revisited that mission statement to, to really lean into like, what is that ritual? What is that? How do people experience that moment of rhythm and connection 
even if it's in their own kitchen, even if it's in their car, even if it's one of those things, but it's with our product. So it's this invitation to pause. And so we say that at Hardy Coffee Company, we recognize that life is unbelievably full. And so we roast really good coffee and we make from scratch baked goods and we invite people to experience rhythm and connection in their day, all the while knowing that the details matter and connection is key. And so those are the two things that we always coach our team towards, uh, paying attention to the details, making sure that those drinks are consistent, that the tables are clean, that we're, we're paying attention to all of the small things that make up the experience on the product. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, it's the connection that's key. If somebody has been in our shop over and over and we've created a relationship with them, if we make a mistake on their drink one time, they're gonna forgive that and keep coming back. It's more about seeing them to pay attention to the person in front of you. You might make a thousand lattes this week, but this person may only get one of them. And so pay attention to that one person, connect with them, give them the attention that, that their humanity deserves. And so those are the things you pay attention to. Love it, love it, beautiful. Is there anything else that you would like to add or maybe um, a question or a, a comment that we haven't brought up that would be important to share with anybody who's enjoying this? Spotlight. You know, I think it's just, I think one of my favorite parts about being in small business is meeting other small business owners and being able to walk through this with them. And um, I think you just see the world differently when that's your lens. And so when we choose which restaurants to go to and we choose which hotels to stay at, when we choose where to spend our time and our money. Uh, we love being able to invest in an ecosystem and a city that that is unique, that looks and feels a lot like home and not just a box store that could be anywhere in America. And so I'm so thankful when other customers do the same thing and help to create a city that we all want to spend time in. Absolutely. Because when business owners, mid-sized mall business owners get better, the whole community mm -hmm. wins right? Communities yeah. get stronger because they're the backbone. They, they give back people like you and business owners like you um, give back to the communities because it's where you work, live and play and raise your kiddos. Yeah. That's my community. Yeah, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Autumn. Um, Linda, yeah. it was so nice to connect with you. Well, absolutely. And here's what I would like to do. Um, we've got a couple um a couple things that we're doing down there and I'd like to explore a little bit maybe using one of your um, coffee shops for something that we call um, coffee and cash flow <clears throat> okay and um, and and maybe set that up and and again those are kind of intimate groups of people that are wanting to just as you say you've got to figure out how do you get consistent cash flow and and we offer that as an opportunity and it's a complimentary um, opportunity. So um, that would be something that I'd love to follow up with you and or, yeah. or maybe have Coach Carter and see if that's a possibility. And then we're we're actually doing something over at in June. We're doing a um, brews and business over at the Nebraska Brewing Company. Um, okay. In that is it the tap room maybe. Um, it, anyway, we're we're working on getting that all set up. And the idea was at, would be after hours to create community where business owners just like you come together and um, actually get results, conduct business. So if they haven't done that, how do we um, create a different kind of a networking where, where we actually conduct business together? And then we also do some kind of education and uh, learn from each other. And we, ha we have a methodology that really works well and people don't have to take their whole lifetime to figure it out um, and replicate it, especially if they have an entrepreneur spirit. Um, so we would love to send you an invitation to that. And if not you, somebody on your team that you feel like you want to develop or grow. Um, and again, when, once we we do that, um, uh, we do believe that bringing community together, we talk about being a care organization where create community with accountability uh, to get results through ed education, business education, and sometimes re-education. Um, so that's kind of our approach as well. And um, if you're interested in that, I'd love to send you just an email with some information on it and have you consider that. That sounds great. Yeah, I'll look forward to seeing that email and I hope you have a great holiday weekend. You too, you too. We'll get this edited and then we'll make sure that we send it out to you. That will probably with the holiday, it might take a little bit over a week, but we will work through that. That sounds great. I appreciate it. Thank you so Lovely much. Lovely to meet you, Autumn. You have, a, have a wonderful holiday weekend.